Hi, I'm Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, I put out laid back luxury travel videos inspiring you to buy that plane ticket, get on a catamaran, and come see Sicily. And if you're a subscriber, thank you so much for stopping back by the channel. I'm so grateful you're here. I really appreciate your support. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you the things that you need to pack when you are going on a one week experience on a catamaran. I am sitting on my 14 meter or 45 foot catamaran and this is my cabin that I am sharing with one of my girlfriends if you've never been on a catamaran you have no idea what it is like nor how limited your space is so this video is extremely important if you're planning on going on a week trip whether you're doing a cabin charter or you're doing a full charter so let's go ahead and get started if you're interested in an experience like this I recommend going with Intersail Club they are a wonderful company based here in Sicily and they have great prices and great trips. This trip started and ends in Palermo. It's seven nights and it is going to three different islands. If you're interested in learning more about my actual seven days at sea in this catamaran, make sure to watch that video. So let's go ahead and get started with what to pack. First and foremost, less is more. Today is day five and honestly, I have lived in a bathing suit and a sarong for most of the trip. In the evenings, if you're actually in a port, you can go out, but honestly, you're only gonna need sort of flip-flops, shorts, a cute little dress, and that's it. So, here we go. Number one, what you need to put everything in. This bag is probably 24 inches by about 18 inches and it is soft sided. This is extremely important to use a soft sided bag when you are traveling on a catamaran. It holds quite a lot and honestly for a week on a catamaran, you do not need to bring any more than this bag like this. Make sure to bring soft sided. These big suitcases do not fit in the cabin holds. Let's start with the most important things to bring and that are bathing suits. Make sure that you bring some one piece bathing suits for swimming because when you jump off the catamaran you don't want to lose your bathing suit. Make sure to bring also some cute two pieces. This one is very thin, very small and it's just beautiful and super super easy to pack. Again you want things that are super easy and super compact in packing. I also brought a second one piece and a second two piece here. So those are your bathing suits. I'd say in a week, three to four is probably enough. In addition to your bathing suit, you want to have a couple of cover-ups. Now this one is a little fancier. I do love this one, but it is just a little bit fancier. This way you can wear it with a tank top in the evening and it looks like a nice little outfit that you've made to go into port. Also with those bathing suits, something that's extremely important are your sarongs. And you want to bring a couple of them because they do start to smell. There's nowhere to wash your clothes unless you plan on washing them in the sea. So I brought a blue sarong, another cream colored sarong that has a little bit of tassel to it. You want to be able to mix and match things and make sure you can use things multiple ways and multiple times. So those are the sarongs. I brought three on this trip. While we're talking about bathing suits and sarongs, let's talk a little bit about the sun clothes that you might want to bring. One, if you're super sensitive and want to go snorkeling, you will want to bring a sun shirt. Sun shirts are wonderful and I do recommend a long sleeve sun shirt and one that actually covers your hiney just a little bit because when you're snorkeling, it's your back and your backside that get burned. So a sun shirt with long sleeves and covers your hiney. I recommend bringing a sun shirt that is really nice to wear on deck during the day. It'll also keep you warm in the evening. I bought this one at REI and it was about $50. The sleeves roll up and it's a 50 SPF. It's meant for the sun, so it's very breathable, but it's a wonderful, wonderful shirt. Continuing on with the swimming gear. Next, very important. You need to bring goggles for a mask and a snorkel. Some of the boats will have them, some of them won't. You're not gonna see anything underwater unless you have this stuff. 
It's great swimming, but you want to see what's under you. So if you're looking for a complete list of everything that is in this video, go to the description below and say free packing guide. Make sure to click the link and it's a wonderful download that gives you all of the items that are on this list. Next, we have a visor to keep the sun off and a cute little hat. This is actually my friend's hat. It's super cute. I think that's wonderful. You can bring any kind of hat that you want. You can bring a baseball cap or cute hats like this or a cute visor as well. Ladies, you want to keep the sun off your face as best as you can. Next, in addition to sarongs, remember I brought three of them, you want to bring a couple of towels. Now, when I say towels, I don't mean regular towels that are bulky. You want to bring quick dry towels and I recommend bringing two different sizes. One, you want to have in the shower with you in your cabin. Have it just a little bit smaller and quick dry because when you dry your clothes, your bathing suits, and your towels, you're actually hanging them over the edge of the catamaran or across the mast. You want to have one and your quick dry towels, you want to make sure that they have the clip here. That way you can tie your towel to the mast or to the side of the boat and it won't get blown off into the sea. One small quick dry towel for the shower and one large quick dry towel. And this is what you lay out on and you dry yourself off after you get out of the ocean or the sea. So this is a large, like huge bath towel size, which I think is perfect. I also suggest bringing some type of layout towel that is generally going to stay dry the entire time. This here is a very soft material, very thin and very lightweight. Again, when I fold this up and wad this up, it fits inside both my hands. So it fits very nice and it doesn't take up too much room. Also, even though this is not a quick dry, it does not take long to dry these towels. Of course, if you're going on a trip and you don't want to have one in your suitcase with you, when you land in port and you want to do some shopping, these are a great thing to buy. Here in Europe, they're eight to 10 euros. So these are fantastic and you can find these all over the world. And the last couple of things that you're going to want for the water are your GoPro, bring your GoPro with you, and and I would recommend bringing one of those water cases with a selfie stick on it and make sure that the selfie stick has a wrap around your wrist because you don't want to lose your GoPro in the middle of the ocean. And I recommend this is a waterproof case for your phone. It's actually sort of a fanny pack so you can take it with you. You can wrap this around your waist and go swimming if you're going to swim to shore from your boat, something like that. Pull out your camera, take a few photos. Now let's talk a little bit about toiletries that you'll need on your trip. I recommend makeup remover cloths. I also recommend wet wipes. You never know when you're going to need a wet wipe. A 50 SPF sunscreen as well as other sunscreens always reef safe as well. I suggest that you bring some bug spray. As soon as you get close to the water, you know what happens. Lots and lots of mosquitoes. And if you tend to get seasick like I do, my favorite product is Bonine. I take one in the morning and one in the evening before bed. You're not going to need much makeup while you're on the trip. So I recommend getting some waterproof mascara. I recommend a little bit of chapstick and perhaps a little bit of lip gloss. That's all you're going to need. I promise you, you are not going to be wearing much makeup while you're on one of these trips. It is very easy to cut yourself, bruise yourself, stub a toe, get a cut. So bring lots of band-aids and bring Neosporin. Neosporin is going to be your friend so you don't get little infected cuts and lots of band-aids. You never know when you're going to need them. Showering is sort of optional a little bit on a boat. You do tend to shower, but fresh water is limited. So it's quite common to actually shower, shampoo, and condition your hair, and use soap, and jump back in the sea, and then jump out, and then jump back in the sea, and rinse off, and come out. And then the last thing you do, you're clean, but you're salty. So you use just a little bit of fresh water to rinse off so you are sort of showered. Hence, 
Lots and lots of deodorant is really, really important. Deodorant is going to be your friend and also all of your neighbor's friends on one of these week-long boats. When you're taking a shower, the most important thing, ladies, especially if you have long hair like me, is a wonderful conditioner. These are my goo tubes, which I love. You can't see my conditioner in here, but you can bring a leave-in conditioner or a regular conditioner, but I would say conditioner is more important than your shampoo. You can wash your hair with almost anything, but the conditioner is extremely important. This brush is also your friend. This is called a wet brush and these brushes are specifically for wet hair to get tangles out. So I suggest putting conditioner in your hair, brushing with this wet brush, and then rinsing of course in the ocean and then rinse off with just a little bit of water. That's about all you're going to need for shampoo, soap, soap, showering, and all of that. So now a little bit about electronics. You're really not going to need many electronics and possibly you're not going to have internet at all unless you use your hotspot and some places you're not even going to have cell phone service. So make sure that you have let everyone know that you are checking out for a week. But things that are super handy to have, a waterproof speaker, which this one is fantastic. You can get your Spotify if you have internet or you can play your music on this. I do recommend a couple of USB cords because most of the modern boats will have USB ports, actually more USB ports than they do physical plugs. And if you're going to a foreign country, make sure to bring whatever adapter that you're going to need. That's about it for electronics. So when you are not in your bathing suit and not in a sarong, there are a couple of items that you will need on the boat to wear, but I promise you not many. First, you're going to need some pajamas that cover you up. Everybody is going up, getting coffee in the morning, sitting in their pajamas, hanging out out back, having breakfast. And honestly, you go from your pajamas pajamas to your bathing suit. So you want to have good covered up pajamas because you may not know everybody on the boat. You also want to have a short, I'd say cover up robe. I love this robe. It's very lightweight, great for the summer, but it is also pajamas first, covering yourself up. Number two, because you don't know who's going to be on the boat with you. Also, you want to bring clothes on the boat that aren't too flowy. When it gets too flowy, the wind is going to pick up and you're going to start showing everybody your tiny. So just be careful about that. So this dress is perfect. It's just long enough to cover up the important parts, but it's not too flowy that you're showing everybody what you don't need to be showing. Honestly, you don't need much else on the boat because most of the time you're in this. You might want to bring an eye mask and you also might want to bring earplugs. If you have trouble sleeping with other people around you, it's 45 feet and eight people. So you are living in very close quarters. Things get loud and you may want to sleep at different times than everybody else. Also, it's very bright out early in the morning. And so if you have trouble sleeping and when it's light outside, then you definitely need to bring an eye mask. A little bit about sunglasses while you're traveling on a boat. Yes, you can bring your Ray-Bans, which are great, but I tend to wear these on shore. I do suggest that you bring sunglasses that are great for the like a strong sun, like snow skiing glasses or true sailing glasses. I also suggest that you bring glasses that are quite sturdy because it's rough on the boat. Sometimes you drop them, you drop them in the water, something like that. So bring sunglasses that are very, very sturdy and bring more than one pair because I can't tell you how many times Times I was wearing my sunglasses, dove in the ocean, and came up with no sunglasses because I forgot that they were actually on. So your final bit of clothes are what you're going to be wearing on shore or at port when you go. I suggest that you bring one or two cute little dresses, nothing fancy. Again, things that wad up very, very small that do not wrinkle. Uh, maybe a couple flowy shirts, maybe just one for a week. I also suggest for shorts or pants. This is a skort and I love wearing skorts. That way you can wear it on board and stumble around the catamaran as well as in the city. And when you're at port, you look nice because you're wearing a skirt. You can also bring a pair of cutoffs. Again, I would say only one pair. And honestly, cutoffs are great, but they don't dry very quickly and they are bulky. So you might want to consider some 
yoga type shorts instead of uh, cutoffs. But of course, cutoffs are cute to wear on a book. I also suggest bring a tank top or two because you just want to throw this on over a bathing suit with your cutoffs or your sports. Bring some type of jacket as well. So this jacket, again, is very lightweight. It's wads up really small and doesn't wrinkle and it's a little bit of a windbreaker and that is a fantastic thing to bring if it gets cool in the evening of course in the middle of august and september you're not going to need this but if you are sailing at in the fall you might need a little jacket also you can bring a raincoat with you just bring one of those great patagonia raincoats that wad up to about this size they're wonderful they're about 200 dollars, but they are well worth having and and you never know when it's gonna rain. In our week, it wasn't expected to rain at all, and it has rained twice so far. The final thing that I suggest when you go ashore is having a cute little bag like this, where you can put your stuff in it, put your water in it, put your extra shoes, whatever you want to have. Again, super small, super easy. I bought like 10 of these bags at once in Oaxaca, Mexico, and I love them. I bought them in every color for about five bucks each. And the final items you're going to need for onshore because you're barefoot on the boat at all times are your shoes. I have several pair of shoes and I've honestly only needed two pair. One, I've worn my Birkenstocks every time I've gone on shore. I have also a pair of flip-flops. I haven't even worn these, but I did bring them and I do recommend you bring a pair of flip-flops. And then finally, some kind of water shoe slash hiking shoe slash going to the shore on the rocks. I love my Chacos here. I think they're wonderful. You can have Keens, you can have the cheap water shoes, you can do whatever you want, but you're going to want some type of water shoe. The main reason I like the Chacos is because they have a strong tread on the back for hiking. They are easy to clean when you have been in the ocean in these. They are sandals, so you can wear them when it's hot. It's really easy to get on the rocks in these Chacos, and I prefer these. I prefer the sandal over the Keens, which are more of a solid shoe. So this is my first week-long catamaran adventure, but I promise you it is not my last. So if you have any other suggestions for the perfect things to pack on your trip, make sure to leave a comment below and let me know what you take on every one of your trips. I hope that you have enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it from my cabin in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea outside of Sicily. I am Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and I will see you on some wonderful catamaran trip somewhere in this world. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and ring that notification bell. See you next time. Bye.